Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? I'm doing okay. So today I had a very good day today. I spoke to my nurse today, but um, today I want to talk about manifestations and meditation. And what I want, what I was doing for this like forever now. I was meditating and I was praying about some things as y'all could tell from my past videos that I made even the videos I've made last year for the past two years two or three years before I erased it I had manifested the life that I've always wanted now we all have dreams and fantasies that we want to make come true and sometimes we don't always follow through it so I pretty had a bad experience following through things like I might not have the best record of following through my plans, but some things I do get done and I do, how you say it, I pressure myself to the mats to get some things done. I haven't been the best timekeeper as well because apparently I done missed out on a lot of stuff and I missed a deadline on some things. So one of the things I was dreaming about was to become a chef. Now, a lot of people that knows me knows that I can cook, see my pictures, love the fact that I take pride and joy into cooking, baking, and mixing drinks. I held down a job mixing drinks. I went to a bartender school. I did all this before I turned 21. My biggest dream was to work in some big nightclub and then that was before I even became mature and wanted to do cooking. My chef dream didn't happen until I was 29. So I pushed myself to the limit because I didn't take the whole cooking thing serious. And I was like, well, it's time that I do take it serious. And let me tell you, it does take a lot of energy, money, dedication. It takes a lot of footwork and blood, sweat, and tears come into it all the time. If you don't want to listen to what I have to say, you don't have to, but I want to take the time out to talk about me and my situation because what I manifest, everybody has manifested all their lives for but I'm really manifesting this and I'm learning how to visualize what I want. So I was sitting here listening, you know, to a video and looking at a video of one of the YouTubers that I love and listen to how she manifested everything that she wanted in her life. So yes, granted, she's like in her 20s, she's younger than me and I see that she got everything together everything she wanted and i'm not trying to compare her to me whatever because i shouldn't be doing that and everybody say you shouldn't compare yourself to the next person because you don't know how they came up or what they went through just to get to where they at so i'm gonna concentrate on me so what i've been manifesting all my life was the perfect career the perfect you know, group of friends, the perfect boyfriend, the perfect house, things like that. I'm not the perfect person, so I can't sit here and claim to be one. But what I am claiming in the name of Jesus is to have the perfect life. So in my situation, I've been struggling for a long time financially emotionally and physically and with that i enlisted the help of so many people that's been in my position to help me out with everything that i need to get myself together financially sadly i'm doing it by myself and it's okay i could do it i'm a big girl i can handle anything that's coming to me so as far as career goals or trying to get my passion <clears throat> together and turn it into a reality career i am just now 
meditating on that and manifesting what it be like what it would be like to have your own office to own your own company or to work with some of the heavy hitters you know out here because i'm in new york and in new york they say dreams come true out here people come here to make their dreams come true i live here born and raised here so i'm trying to make that happen so everything that i do i pretty much take pictures of it i do show people's i talk about it and i have so much patience so i know this is not going to just happen overnight or within days or weeks it's going to take some time and it's going to take a lot of footwork and blood sweat and tears to manifest what i want to get what i want and by working on it i have to go back to school i have to go back to trade school put in the footwork and come up with the money to buy the certificates the license and everything because that costs money for anybody out here who knows a little bit about culinary it's so difficult to maintain a license so because of not only because of the the prices is because nowadays classes are starting to become overcrowded people start to become overwhelmed but they are just like hitting the pounding the pavement really hard to get what they need because people out here want to become chefs there are amazing restaurants and bistros out here that people are working in and they are becoming well known the longer they stay in there so i was like you know what that's something i wanted i had a dream more than once that i worked in a bistro and i started working in manhattan and I went from Manhattan to down south. Now, because of my work skills, my ethnic, um, my ethnic work, uh, ethnic background, I call it, um, big. Just put it like this: because of my skills in the culinary field, so many people from all over the world wanted to talk to me and work with me. And in this dream, I got to work with some of the best heavy hitters in South Carolina. Now. Granted, the reason why I say South Carolina is because that's my grandmother's hometown. That's home to me. It's near and dear in my heart. So I always wanted to go back down there to check it out, to see what's down there now, to see how they upgraded things, and to see if I can get a job down there. Now, I don't want to just work in some little barbecue shack or whatever like that. I want to work in one of the most beautiful gourmet restaurants down there expensive prestigious restaurants and i see myself traveling and i even have predictions of me traveling around the world just to do cooking shows and just to do contests and stuff like that and to be well known to have meetings one-on-one -on -one interviews even having my own podcast and then one day I was talking to my neighbor about me cooking because they didn't know I cooked. And I was telling them that every night I dream about it, I manifest it, and I have a vision board. So I put on my phone a cute little vision board of what my life would be like, right down to me having kids. And one thing I wanted the most was to have a beautiful restaurant. I wanted my own staff. I went in my own store and I went to have stores all around New York, all around Jersey, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Texas, you know, the whole East Coast area. I'm a big East Coast lover at heart. I was born in the East Coast. So I want to shine a light on East Coast, just like how people are shining the light so much in the Midwest to the West Coast. And then I always wanted to travel to Nashville, Tennessee. So for some reason, I keep praying about it because it kept calling me. And then seeing my favorite cooks living in the Nashville area, 
I was like, you know what? I have got to get myself over there some way, somehow. And then Charleston, South Carolina is calling my name as well. So, long story short, I made this vision board. I showed my neighbor the vision board. And she thought it was one of the best things ever. She never thought anybody could do something like that because she never seen nobody try to do anything like that. So, me being the loud mouth that I am, I contacted so many people, email wise, even on social media, questioning them about everything from cooking to getting a job. How do I talk to these managers around New York City about it? And where do I go to to get the license for me to be able to start cooking and owning a license for the bar? Because at the end of the day, it's like, how else are you going to start? And a lot of people who became these world-renowned chefs started cooking in their homes. Some of them saved up money for a food truck. Some of them rented out places to cook. And I thought that was like the most creative way of doing things. So on my vision board, I, I'm not going to say too much about it, but what I predicted and dream of and meditated was to have this beautiful, love and stress free life of owning my own lingerie store, my restaurant, you know, owning a pet, you know, probably a little puppy, having my husband and living in New York City or Jersey. Because as many times as I've been traveling up and down Jersey and New York City, I started to fall in love with it. So I was like, how can I leave my home state, you know, to live somewhere else? And then at the same time, I was like, it wouldn't hurt to try to gain a bigger audience and bigger, like, start create friendships and work buddies. You want to create a lot of relationships with people up and down the East Coast or where you're from all over the world. Because it's better for you because the the more you network, the more friendships you create and the more future partners you create, you're going to have and people's going to know you. And then once people start to get to know you and see your passion and tell by your attitude and your personality that you are passionate about what you really want to do with your life, they will start working with you. They will give you a chance and help you out. And I was like, okay. To get the best help that I need, I need to help myself out the best way I can. So I put myself out there on social media, letting people know that I love to cook, like I love to do makeup, and I always wanted to work with big heavy hitters like Chef Ramsey, Chef, um, no, I don't even know why I'm naming these people because some of the shows I'm about to say to you, I probably don't even know, but Amanda Freitag, you know, Chef Aaron Sanchez, Aaron Sanchez, Chef Aaron um, from the Midwest, and Chef Gina, to um, a lot of people that I watch over the years. I fell in love with their careers. I fell in love with them. They have been the best of the best, like chefs ever their creativity in cooking and baking is what got me wanting to do more and more it sparked my interest and people don't realize is how deep my passion goes it's undeniable it's as far as the eye can see it's like i've been dreaming about this for years and I said I was willing to sacrifice everything just to get to where I need to go. So I'm going to continue to listen to my intuition and try to make this work. And what I also dreamed about is working in the corporate world as well, but with limitations because as far as working with people goes, I always wanted to work with a group of women who is similar to me 
Now, when I say this, I don't mean to sound sexist or sound immature or like I hate men because this is nowhere near me showing y'all or trying to show that I hate men because I don't. But I wanted to work in a world full of women where we get to express our creativity, express ourselves through our work and not be shut up for it. I want to work in a world where us women can be strong, independent. We can be strong-willed, strong-minded, open, and honest, and not have to tiptoe around people's feelings and worry about what's being too aggressive or harsh and what's being too open and weak. And I don't want none of that. I wanted to work with a bunch of strong-minded women who has the best creative outlook in the world people who want to go as far as they want to just to create the type of lives that they want my my thing is we should be able to work in the corporate world the way we want to work in you know and just express ourselves the way we want we should be able to work around men that will allow us to be ourselves, you know, and allow to be creative and to express ourselves in many ways without having to be shut up or limited because they can't handle us in that way. And then a lot of people will say that what men could do, women could do better. We are very strong in many ways that y'all don't even know and we don't want y'all to feel intimidated by us or emasculated, but feel good around us because you're not going to get a lot of women out here who is going to feel the same way we feel or express ourselves the way, you know, we should. You're not going to find women who's going to be able to work around men and still, you know, be able to be strong about it. We are not here to be intimidated, threatened by it. We are here, here to work right alongside of men in every aspect of life. And I wanted to show myself and my creativity and show my brain off to the world and let people know that I do have the brain to work with smart people, to work with people who's been going up the corporate ladder. It wasn't just about baking and cooking for me, but it was more about dealing with money and working in the money field, such as working down in Wall Street, learning how to create more businesses and make more money based on what we love and expand that worldwide. Now, us as women, we're taking over the culinary business and the hairstyle business and everything, cosmetics, everything. That's all fine and dandy. But what we're not taking over is the hedge fund companies, this um, corporate ladder where it was all about the lawyers and judges and hedge funds and teachers and stuff and scientists and whatever. And... Everybody was so intimidated by that because they feel like, oh, well, us men, we can do whatever we want and whatever. We don't got to worry about females wanting to do it. And they treat this like it's a boys club and it's not a boys club. This is a club for everybody. We can do the same things as well. Climb up the corporate ladder, create businesses based off of what we learn in school and we can move right along with these men out here and do exactly what they do yeah we put in twice as much energy work blood sweat and tears but at least we're doing it and we're not going to give up on it and i don't see nobody planning on giving up on it and that is one of the best things ever so long story short with what I envisualized was me keeping my passion going and keep letting people know out here this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm planning on doing. This is a permanent thing. This is not a temporary thing. 
and I'm going to keep doing it until I get to where I need to go in life and get to meet the people that I need to meet, not who I want to meet, but who I need to meet. Because they say certain people are being placed in your path for a reason. They teach you things, they help you out, they give you the best advice ever, and it's up to you to keep going. Some people open the door for you, and it's up to you to walk right through it and keep moving until you get to where you need to go. Where, you, where I need to be in life is where I see my mentor and everybody else. And I love, love, love the fact that so many females like me is taking it up a notch, busting their asses to make themselves known even if it looks like it's embarrassing they putting themselves out there they pounding the pavement night and day day and night they not resting okay and that's what i've been sitting here doing forever now on my spare time if i don't really have much to do i am going all over New York City talking to peoples. I made a couple of friends based off of the community that I'm a part of and I love the fact that we are all trying to make it in the culinary world, the beauty world and who can we talk to? Now you're never too old to get mentors, to have mentors in your life because I have a mentor in my life who I look up to since I was like 18 years old and when I finally got to meet her I was so starstruck and I was so happy because now I get to have access to talk to her every day or whenever I need to talk to her and she's been nothing but understanding patient and she's been friendly and then I spoke to my therapist about it so I was like I'm making my business to go to every community meetings whether it's in person or is online. Now, I've seen all over social media that they have these communities online where you could sign up for it and you could be a part of it every time they have a meeting. And I see a lot of updates and I do join it. I look at everything. I put my two cents in. They do ask you questions and they do give you all types of um things to do you know they give you some of the best advice sometimes they do have to be a little harsh to get through to you because some people could be a little stubborn some people could be too like how you say too self-conscious and too how you say they talk bad about themselves like i see people who come down so hard on themselves because they feel like they don't have it in them always always think that every challenge you go through is because it's meant for you to fight it and it's like the more challenges you get coming your way the more you have to fight for it and the more you fight for it and the harder you fight the more rewards you get you will be rewarded one day for your hard work for your fight you have to go through so much Pers perseverance means a lot i pray to god every night that he gives me the strength to fight through my battles i pray for prosperity love strength good health good career family life and marriage and love and love comes in many forms and that's what i wanted the most and good health it started all because I had got a wake up call over one little incident that I had. And then I was like, it's enough to make me realize that life is too short. You got to fight through this. You can't just sit here and say, oh, I'll give up because you went through one or two bad things. Or you went through a couple of bad things. And then all of a sudden you think it's not meant for you to have something. Or it's not meant for you to be something. Or see something or get to where you want to go it's it's like seriously that's so not the case so i go through so much hardships and struggles 
And there was times where I did want to give up and say, like, this is not meant for me. It must not meant for me to have it because otherwise it wouldn't, I wouldn't, shouldn't, I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through just to get what I want. And then I thought about it. God put you through so much because he knows you can fight for it. You're strong enough for it. And then so many people's in the past, from social workers to attorneys to therapists, always telling me that you are strong enough. She said they proud of me. And it's like, if you didn't, if you wasn't that strong to go through what you go through, fight for it and make everything work, you wouldn't have won. And she was like, I bet you, you won. And you didn't even know this. Everything you've been through, you managed to get through it. It's like, you didn't even know this day. You got through some of the hardest things in your life. And you made it work for yourself. Like, And because of that, it's like, now look what's going on. You got people's attention. You got people to listen to you. And you got to do exactly what you need to do now the next step is keep that same passion that result that you had like the result that came out of you fighting for what you want keep going and you get better results the more things you do the better results that comes out of it and i never thought i was like i never even thought in my wildest imagination that something this good could happen to me and she said, well, keep fighting for it. Like, keep going. It's like, who's to say that you're not worthy of having that? She said, like, keep going and keep going and you will get that. It's like, you got to fight for it. Keep fighting for it. Okay. You're going to hear a lot of no's before you hear that yes. You're going to get a lot of doors closed in your face before you get that one door open. And she was right about it. So I was like, yes. I'm going to have to go through a lot of no's to get to that one yes. You're going to get a lot of people that's not going to believe in you. But you are until you get that one person who will believe in you. Who will listen to what you have to say. And who will work with you. That person who's going to believe in you is that one person that's going to be there when you accomplish everything and more. And when you do accomplish it, you look back at that person and you say thank you. So it was like the so the moral of the story is don't ever think that you're not worthy of having the best in life. Like don't think you're not worth you're not worthy to have what you've been dreaming of and what you're manifesting because at the end of the day you are. I'm worthy of it. I think of that every day. I'm worthy of it and I'm manifesting it. So I'm gonna continue on with my vision board. And I just want everybody to know that y'all are truly blessed out here and y'all are worthy, just like I am, to have what we always pray for. And women, always, always, always fight, fight to the death of you just to get into that world, that corporate world, that beautiful business world that you always dream of where you get the corner office or you have your own floor your own business you get your own name on top of a company that you always dreamed of don't ever stop going out there making yourself known and communicate with the most biggest people out here the heavy hitters go to these headhunters like i'm about to do and I'm going to have to put myself out there and let them know, like, I'm not playing around. This is serious. Like, I want to make myself known in every community, every, like, in this world. I want everybody to know what I do, what I love to do, and what it's going to do for people out here in the future. So, it's like, with that being said, let's keep fighting for it, and we're going to get this right. We're going to let it be known. We're going to make this work. And we're going to be well known here. Well loved. People's going to love us. So just keep going. And I holla next time.